on. All right, so we're starting to cater. Or in case you, you might need a strap and also you might want blocks. So make sure you've got them before we start. Sorry, I should have said that a second ago. All right, so find yourself with Sukhasana, which is easy cross-legged. So either ankle to ankle or shin to shin. Maybe you're even sitting on a block if you like. Just to centre, just for a few moments at the beginning of practice. I know it's the beginning of the day, you probably just got out of bed or, or maybe you haven't if you're like me. And just bring one hand on to your um, solar plexus, you know, the seat of your intention, the centre, and one, end, one hand on to your heart. Let your eyes close down and just settle in. Just really connect to yourself by holding yourself in this way, giving yourself a little bit of tenderness, a little bit of love to start the day. And feeling grounded. This sort of holding myself like this just helps me to... Ah, let go of any sort of tension or or anything else just brings myself back to being just here and present. So allowing the crown of the head to reach up and the shoulders to rel relax down away from the ears so that you're sitting up nice and tall but without too much strain. Bringing your attention to your body, how it feels this morning. And always paying attention to it during our practice, our physical asana. Knowing that you can always take rest, you can always come to a child's pose, or even shavasana if you feel like you need it at any point, and rejoin us when you're ready. Always coming back to the centre, to the breath. So that said, let's just focus your attention on your breath now. Breathing in and out through the nostrils. If this is impossible and you've got blocked nose for whatever reason, then just breathe smoothly and freely in and out through the mouth. But wherever you are, mouth or nose, just start to lengthen the breath so that it's a bit smoother, a bit steadier. You can slow everything down with your breath. Maybe taking ujjayi breath. And if you're unsure on what ujjayi breath is, as I always say, it's just like constricting the base of your throat, making this audible sound, but with your lips closed. So even if you think to yourself, oh, I can't do that, I always forget about it, just start trying because I promise you eventually it does become second nature and it's a really, really good way to um, breathe while you're practicing yoga. So with twists, if you find yourself becoming breathless, because sometimes, especially when we get to the deeper twist, you might find you're losing your breath, just back out of the asana a little bit, so that you can connect with the breath again. So just taking a few more breaths, and as you breathe in and out, just thinking about the day ahead and perhaps naming an intention for your day, for your practice on the mat. It can be anything, whatever comes to mind. It could be just one word like peace or fresh air or energy, love, whatever it is, kindness, listening. There's so many things, you can just make that your intention. Good, one more breath together, inhale. Hold the breath at the top. And then open the mouth and sigh it out. <sighs> Lovely, opening your eyes. Welcome everybody. Reach your hands behind you and just lean back and change the crossing of your legs to so the other legs in front. I'm just gonna warm up the physical body first. So breathe in, reach the arms up. Interlace the hands, press the palms up. And we're gonna take a few seated cat and cow. So breathe in here while you lengthen up. And then breathe out, bring the palms to face the screen round the back. Really get a lot of space there as you maybe tilt back on the pelvis. And then breathe in, reach the arms up to the sky again. Maybe even bring the shoulders behind your ears a little bit. Exhale round and find that uh, cat position. Breathe in, reach the arms up, finding like this little gentle back bend. 
And last time into that cat, round and round, exhale. So moving with your breath. Come all the way back up to centre, inhale. And then exhale, bring the arms around all the way, interlace them behind your back. Squeeze the shoulder blades at the back together and open through the collarbones. Get a nice sense of length and spaciousness. And then release your hands, bring your fingertips onto the mat and just open up that um, chest space a little bit higher. Press the ground away, really get a sense of lifting. Lovely. And then come all the way back to centre. Bring your knees up into straight away Navasana and reach the arms long. Good, breathe in here. And then as you exhale, bring your right um, top of your arm to the thigh of your left leg and press with your palms flexed back as though you're doing, this is a side crow seated. Guess what we might be trying later. Breathe in here. And then breathe out, come back to centre and take the arms to the other direction. So we're only doing a few core sort of warm ups and really reach the hands, flexing the fingertips back towards you. And then come back to centre and then bring your right shin in front of your left to Sukhasana and reach your hands over towards the left side and just fold over towards the left side. So getting a little bit of length in the right side body. Inhale here and exhale. And if you're feeling a little bit stiff, that's fine. It's early in the morning, I know, it's all right. Inhale, come back to center. That's why we're warming up slowly. Find that Navasana again. Let's do that one more time. So finding your um, twisted crow. So bring your, um, well, it's really the upper arm to the thigh. Doesn't matter which side, we'll do both. Breathe in, come back to center. And then breathe out, take the other direction. So really squeeze the inner thighs towards each other, squeeze the knees, press the hands as though you've got an imaginary floor there and lift the chest. Good, come back to center. Pause, and then lean forwards and cross the left shin in front of the right, and walk your hands all the way over the right knee towards the right, so that you feel a nice sort of twisting but lengthening as well. Re reach the left sit bone down towards the mat if it's lifting up. Lovely, and then come all the way back to centre. Reach the, come back into that um, Navasana, cross the ankles, and just come forwards and find your way back to a downward facing dog. Oh, how are we doing? So maybe pedal the feet, one leg, the other leg, if you're feeling a bit stiff in the back of your legs. Just easing into the hamstrings and breathing. Lovely, and when you're ready, find stillness in your down dog. So let's continue to warm up, press the ground away with your hands, reach the hip bones up high, and then lift that right leg up to the sky. Bend the knee and open the hip and maybe turn that right ankle a few times, looking underneath the left armpit, if you like, at your right toes. Not worrying if you open that right hip, just finding a nice easy twist here. And then straighten the right leg up. Come forwards to a three-legged plank and then bring that right knee as though you're coming into pigeon, almost pigeon, but you're not touching the mat with your shin or your knee and then reach the right leg back up again. Bend the knee, open the hip. Straighten that leg, inhale. And then exhale, almost pigeon again on the right side. So this uses a lot of core, it's quite a tough pose, early on. And then bring that right shin down, find that pigeon briefly, lengthening the left leg behind you, coming upright. Good. So in your upright pigeon, take a breath in. And then start to walk your hands around to the right, so over towards that bent knee, the front knee, but stay high, so you're just taking a twist to look behind you towards the foot behind you, the left foot. Take a breath in, and a breath out. As we walk the hands all the way back to centre, plant the hands down, tuck the back toes, and come back into a three-legged down dog. Inhale here, and then exhale, come forwards to a three-legged plank. 
and then bring that foot so that you're in a full plank, knees come down, lower all the way down onto the mat. Just taking a gentle vinyasa as it's our first one. Inhale to a little baby cobra. So in a baby cobra, you're not really using your hands, you're using your low back. And exhale, press the ground away. Push back, maybe through an active child's pose, downward facing dog. So just easing slowly into our warm ups. Breathe in and reach the right leg up to the sky. And then bend that knee, open the hip. Maybe turn the ankle left and right in circles. Look under your right armpit towards that left foot. Good, and notice what your right heel's doing, your right thigh. Try and straighten that, get a bit of length. But you don't have to reach the heel to the floor if it's not, you know, there yet today, that's fine. Straighten that left leg up. Breathe in, and then as you breathe out, come forwards and bring that left shin forwards as though you're going into pigeon, but you're not bringing that shin down. Press the ground away so that you protract through the shoulder blades, get core strength. Good, and then reach that leg back up again. Inhale. Bend the knee, open the hip again. And then bring that knee forwards, almost pigeon, hold it here. See if you can do this. Three. Keep breathing, two. And one, bring that left shin down, reach the right leg back. Find that proud pigeon to start with. Lovely. And then walk your hands around so that your, your hands are sort of towards the left side. Maybe looking back behind you if your neck feels okay doing that towards your right foot. Just getting a nice twist to start. Beautiful. Lovely. And then bring your hands back to centre. Plant both hands down. Tuck the back toe. Downward facing dog. Lovely. One more vinyasa. Inhale, come forwards to a plank. And then exhale. We're going to lower all the way down to the ground. You can use your knees, hug your elbows in, or you can go down in one long line, as long as you're hugging the elbows in. Bring the arms back behind you, interlace them just behind your sacrum. Bring the feet to touch, zip your legs up, and come into a locust. So reach the arms away from your sacrum. Lift the shoulders up, so it's really broadening through the collarbones. Reach your toes back long, maybe even lifting your knees. Breathe in here again. And exhale, lower down, release the hands. Hands under shoulders, and come back to downward facing dog. Maybe through an active child's pose. Maybe just pressing back up through a reverse chaturanga, if that's how you feel today. Lovely, next breath in. Look forward. Come up high onto the balls of your feet and just walk your feet. Try and keep your legs straight if you can, all the way until you arrive at the front of your mat in a forward fold, Uttanasana. Bend your knees if you need to, because it's early. <laughs> I know what I felt like a couple of hours ago. <laughs> just fold, maybe just bend and straighten opposite legs. Just work into the hips a little bit. And then wherever you are, bend into that right knee, straighten the left leg, bring that right hand straight underneath your face and reach the left arm up. Just for a nice forward fold twist here. Inhale. So right knee bent, left arm up. Yeah, that's it, left leg straight. And then switch sides. So bend into the left knee, bring your left hand underneath your face and reach the right arm up. So the right leg straight. Just twisting and looking up. And then exhale, come back down to centre. On the next breath in, bring your hands up towards your shins. Have a chance to lengthen the spine here. So in, to, to make sure that the twists are safe, we need a long spine. We need space in the hips and also the shoulders. So that's what we're going to work on. And exhale, fold. Next breath in, come all the way up to standing, rolling up. Just undoing your vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. You know what I mean. Reach the arms up, inhale. And exhale, samasthiti. Okay, let's move through a couple of sun salutations. Inhale, just half sun salutations to start. Reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forwards into Uttanasana. Breathe in, lengthen the heart forward. Squeeze the back body. And breathe out to fold. Inhale, root to rise, arms come all the way up, press the ground away, arms lift. And let's go all the way back down again, exhale. 
Coming into lunge salutations, inhale, halfway. So sun C, exhale, plant your hands, right foot back, right knee down. Just moving and breathing, inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. And exhale, both hands down, finding a plank. Inhaling your plank. And exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, or knees down and modified Chaturanga, elbows hug in. Inhale, finding that back bend, up dog or cobra, or locust. Exhale, down dog. Good. Breathe in, right leg reaches up. And breathe out, step the right foot between the hands, left knee down. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up to the sky, lengthen the sides of the waist, hug the low belly in. Exhale, both hands down, step to the top of the mat, fold. Breathe in, heart lifts, hands on shins. Exhale, fold. Ground through the feet, reach the arms all the way up to the sky, look up and stretch up. And exhale, let's go all the way back down again, the other side, fold forwards, Uttanasana. Moving with breath, inhale halfway. And exhale, hands down, left foot back, left knee down. Inhale, arms reach up, lengthen the sides of the waist, hug low belly in. Exhale, both hands down, step to a plank. Knees down is always an option here, inhale. And exhale, either Chaturanga Dandasana or knees down and lower all the way down. Breathe in to that back bend, cobra up dog. And exhale, down facing dog. Inhale, left leg rises. And exhale, step the left foot to the top of the mat, right knee down. Breathe in, the arms lengthen up, reach up through the sides of the waist. Breathe out, hands down, step to the top of the mat, fold. Lovely, everyone. Inhale, heart lifts, hands on shins, really reach crown of the head forwards. Exhale, fold. Press feet down, reach arms up, all the way up, look up, stretch up. And this time, exhale, hands to your heart. Adding on and going on with our flow now. Ready? Breathe in. Reach the arms up, look up and stretch up. And exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, hands towards shin, so really lengthening the spine every time we do this. Exhale, hands down, left foot back, keep that knee up, come all the way up to a crescent lunge. Good, in your crescent lunge, we'll stay here for a few breaths. Bring your hands behind you, option to either hold on to the opposite elbows or forearms, or else to take a reverse prayer. So I'm trying to show you, yes. All right, so staying here, maybe you're tucking the tailbone under a little bit to really lengthen this hip flexor on your left. Open the shoulders a little bit more. Breathe in and breathe out. Drishti is looking at something that's not moving. Breath is smooth and steady. Good, release the hands and then bring the right hand to the right hip crease and the left arm reaches up to the sky. Good, keep imagining you're pulling that hip crease back and then start to reach forwards with the left hand, bringing the left tricep to the outside of the right thigh. And then bring the right hand and the left hand to touch in prayer. Press the hands against each other, get a lift. Keep bringing that right outer hip back as though you've got hand, your hand in the hip crease and keep lengthening back, bring really strong through the left thigh. Maybe turn and look over towards the ceiling. One breath, inhale, and exhale, well done. Release the hands, come all the way forwards, left arm reaches all the way up, pivot on your right, uh, left foot, and find warrior two. Yeah, a bit slow with the first round. Finding warrior two, reaching the arms long, forwards and back. And then breathe in, right hand up, left hand down. Reverse your warrior, peaceful warrior. Keep bending into the right knee. Inhale here, and then exhale, come back to centre and straighten that front knee, Uttita Trikonasana, maybe adjusting back foot in if you need it. Exhale as the right hand moves forwards, the left hip back, 
Finding your first triangle, so you might be quite high in your triangle, try and stay long in the sides of the waist. Peeling the underneath ribs, the right ribs, underneath and towards the side of the room, left hand stretches up. Inhale, your gaze can go up to the left fingers or it can go straight ahead, as long as your neck's really nice and long. Lovely, next breath in, come back to centre, inhale. Widen the stance if you need to. Exhale, finding Parshvakonasana, and we're going to try and take a bind. So you can start with the right elbow on the knee, reaching the left arm up. Either stay here or turn the left palm to face behind you and bring that left hand behind you to hold maybe onto the right thigh. And then if you want to, you can reach underneath and take a bind. So half bind or full bind. And if you've got the bind easily, try and grasp the top wrist with your bottom hand and then try and straighten that top arm to open the shoulder a little bit more. If you've got the half bind, still keep working that, those underneath ribs, the right ribs out to the side. You can release that bottom hand, the right hand towards the floor. Lovely. Release the bind if you have it and then come all the way back up to centre. Good job. And then turn, reach the right arm up, pivot on the left foot, reach the arms up to the sky, find yourself in crescent lunge. Hands come to your heart, straighten that front knee, and then step the back foot in about a third of the way. The heel comes down and the back foot's 45 degree angle to the front, coming into a pyramid pose for this round. So again, imagine you've got, you, you can even bring your right hand to that right hip crease, bring that out, right out hip back and then start to reach forwards and forwards. And then maybe you bring your hands down towards the floor or a block, and then you lengthen the heart forwards. So keep working the right out hip back, left out hip forward. That's good, Mandy. So helping you, holding onto that hip crease will really give you that sensation of, yeah, I need to pull that a bit back to give myself space. And then fold forwards. One breath, inhale. And exhale. Good, next breath in, look forwards, and then step your left foot to meet your right, and sit down into your chair pose to reach the arms up. Yeah, well done. Inhale here. Really sit low, squeeze the inner thighs, just like you were doing in the seated pose, bring your hands to your heart. And then bring your right tricep towards the outside of that left thigh. Press the palms together. Get a really nice sense of lifting. So you're lifting away from those thighs and looking up towards the ceiling. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Try not to let your right knee come in front of your left. So notice if it is it's probably natural that it is because your hips are twisting that way. Good. Breathe in. And breathe out. And then come back to centre, reach the arms up, straighten the knees, reach the arms all the way up above the head, have a little standing back bend, this feels so nice after twists, and exhale, hands to your heart. Good, other side. Inhale, reach the arms up, and then exhale, fold forwards all the way down. Breathe in, heart lifts, lengthen the back body. And breathe out, plant the hands. This time, step the right foot back, come into crescent lunge with the right leg back. Reach the arms up. Lovely. Inhale here, steady yourself first. Gaze, your drishti and your breath steady. And then exhale again, bring the hands behind you. Either find yourself holding on to opposite upper arms or elbows or taking a reverse press. And maybe lengthen the tailbone down, find length here. So you're really strong in your breath. Your legs are strong. Maybe that back leg's straight. Engaging through the right glute muscle a lot. One more breath, inhale. Lovely, exhale. Yes, yeah, switch legs if it's the wrong leg. Bring your left hand to your left hip crease and reach your right arm up. Good. So you keep pulling back this left hip crease and then lengthen, reach the right arm forwards so that you can get as high up that right tricep, almost towards the armpit, towards the outside of the left leg. Palms come together, 
Press the palms against each other to get lift and try and get your sternum, so the centre of your chest, to your thumbs. Really lifting, maybe your balance is challenged, but keep hugging the inner thighs towards each other, left out, hip back. Breathing in, Woo, I'm wobbling a bit. And breathing out. If you wobble like me, just look down. Woo. Release your hands. And then your right arm comes all the way up and back. Pivot onto your right foot. Find warrior two. Yeah, breathe in here. And breathe out. Peaceful warrior. Right hand down, left arm up. Inhale. Keep bending into that left knee. Don't let it raise. And exhale. Come back to centre. Beautiful. Straighten the front knee, breathe in, maybe heel toe the back foot in, prepare for triangle. Exhale, reach forwards, reach forwards, right hip back, left arm forwards, left hand down, peel the left ribs to the side, turn the right shoulder so it's in line with the left, and then reach the hands up. Good. Keep pressing down into both feet equally, lengthening through the crown of the head, maybe looking up. Inhale, come back to centre. And then exhale, bending into that front knee again, widening the stance if you shortened it for side angle, Pajlokanasana with a bind. So again, you can start with that elbow on the knee and reach the hand up. Then turn the palm to face behind you and bring that arm behind you. Doesn't matter where you get that hand, just open out that right shoulder a little bit more and peel open those left ribs. Maybe taking a full bind or the half bind. So if you did a full bind on the other side, do your best to do it on this side. Doesn't matter if you if it's your shoulders are not the same on each side. Inhaling, lovely. And exhale. Next breath in, come all the way back up to centre, releasing the bind slowly. Good job, everyone. And then pivot on the right foot, reach the arms up. Both hands come to your heart, hug the inner thighs towards each other and straighten the front leg. And then step the back foot in a little bit, coming into our pyramid pose. So the right outer hips forward, left outer hip back. Again, you can have, have your hand in that hip crease. And then inhale here. If you have got your hand in the hip crease, you can just reach your right arm forwards, come all the way forwards. And then both hands towards the floor or a block. Find length in your spine just like you've done in the half lifts every time, and then maybe fold. It's always good to bring the ground up to you with blocks. Inhaling, trying to straighten that front knee if you can. And exhale. So Rachel, maybe straighten the front knee, maybe bring the block underneath. Yeah, because I know you've got lovely long legs. <laughs> well done. And from here, step your right foot to meet your left. Bend both knees, find chair pose. Reach the arms up really strongly first. Hug the inner thighs towards each other. Sit the hip back a little bit more. And then bring your hands to your heart. So let's take that twisted uh, chair. So bring your uh, left tricep against your right leg. Is it left? Whichever one we've been doing. Yes, that's it. It is left. And then press the palms against each other, get lift, look up over the, um, towards the ceiling. Inhale here. And exhale, stay. Press the palms, get that chest all the way to your thumbs. And then come back to centre, reach the arms up, find that chair one more time. And straighten the knees. Come into a standing back bend. Sometimes it's nice to interlace the thumbs, pull the thumbs against each other so you feel a bit of energy in your shoulders in the standing back bend. And then come back to centre, hands to your heart. Good, adding on now. Ready? Breathe in, reach the arms up. And then breathing out, fold forwards. Uttanasana. Inhale, lift that heart forwards, hands on shins. This is my preferred way this time. Exhale, hands down, step the left foot back, find that high crescent lunge, reaching the arms all the way up. Good, and then from here, we're gonna take a cow face arms, so you're gonna bend that right um, elbow, bring the hands towards, be between your shoulder blades, left arm comes out to the side. Maybe you grab a hold of the um, 
So not eagle arms, Mandy. So your right elbow is behind you and your left arm is behind you, opening the shoulders in this way. If you prefer eagle arms, that's fine. So like this or this. Yes. Right arm up and over your head, Mandy. And then bend the arm, bring it between your shoulder blades and then reach your left arm around behind, see if you can grab a hold. If you can't quite, hold on to the shirt. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's hard on Zoom to explain sometimes, well done. Sit down a little bit more, inhale. And then exhale, release the hands. Again, bring that right hand to your inside crease of your um, hip, reach the left arm forwards and come as high as you can towards the armpit. Press the palms together and stay here or you can reach the left hand down and the right arm up. Just challenge your balance. Maybe it's not you today and that's fine. Bring both hands together and come to prayer. That's fine too. Wherever you are, you're in a twist. And that's all that matters. And if you're breathing, that's good as well. So inhale. And exhale. Twists are really good for detoxifying because you're twisting your internal organs and briefly the blood supply is being squeezed tight. And then when you undo the twist, the blood flows and floods into that area, giving you a really nice burst of oxygen. So that's why it's thought to be detoxifying and also de-stressing. Come all the way back to center and sweep the left arm forwards up and back, pivot on the left foot, bend into the right knee. Warrior two again. Breathe in, find that peaceful warrior. And breathe out, come back to center. Triangle pose, inhale, straighten the front knee. And use that breath on the exhale to bring you all the way down into your trikonasana. Right hand down, turn and peel open the right shoulder, left shoulder towards the ceiling, left fingertips reach up. Lovely. Breathe in, come all the way back up to center. Don't forget, use blocks to bring the ground up to you. Breathe out, bend into that right knee. And let's find your bound side angle. So your choice, you don't have to do the bind if you don't want to. If you want to do the bind, you can do the half bind or the full bind that we did before. Or you can just come to a side angle. So Mandy, you're bringing your elbow towards that front knee. So rather than warrior two, you're in side angle, Pajvakonasana. Yeah, that's it, beautiful. Inhaling. And exhale. Release the bind if you have it. Inhale all the way back up to centre. And then turn and pivot to come into crescent lunge. Hands to your heart, straighten the front knee. Step the back foot in about a third of the way. Good. And from here we're going to make our way to a triangle, twisted triangle pose, okay? Alright, so I find the best way to do this. Hold on to, use a block in front of you if you need it. You don't always need it, but sometimes it's nice. Hold on to the inside of your thigh with your right thigh, with your right hand. Keep pulling that back. Reach your left arm forwards and forwards and forwards. Really go forwards a long way, but keep pressing into the back foot. And then the left hand can come down either on the inside of that foot, in front of it, or onto a block on the outside, or onto the floor on the outside. Keep that length. And then maybe put your hand on your sacrum, make sure that that sacrum is nice and level and flat. Then turn and peel your right shoulders to the right and reach your right arm up. For twisted triangle, this is not the easiest of poses, so if you're struggling, just connect with your breath again. You can come into that um, pyramid pose again if you'd rather do that, if your shoulders aren't liking it, that's fine. Inhale. You can even bring that top arm down and keep it on your sacrum. And exhale. Let's take one more breath. How are you all doing? You all look fabulous. One more breath. And then exhale. Bring that right hand down to the mat. And step the left foot to meet the right. And bend the knees. Find that chair pose. Reach the arms up. Good. Here, squeezing the inner thighs. Bring your hands to your heart. Lovely. And then bring your... I realised we did two twists on the left side before, I think. Anyway, bring your left tricep towards your right knee. That twist, press the palms together. 
Yeah, lift. Good, and from here, either stay here or come up onto your tiptoes and sit down onto your heels. Yeah. And then we're gonna take the side crow if you like. So reach your hands. If you're in the twisted prayer and it gets too much for you, come to a yogi squat by bringing your legs, your, your feet wide apart and come into a squat if you don't wanna try this. If you're trying a side crow, bring your hands in chaturanga, just to the side of you, and you're really hugging that tricep high up towards the thigh. Good. And you're using all the principles you've done already by really squeezing the inner thighs, getting this twist, leaning forwards, and then coming to rest on either one elbow, ideally, or two. Two is good when you're starting this pose, because it gives you that more stability. And then you're gonna lean forwards, look forwards, just like you would in an ordinary crow, and then pick up the bottom foot, and your top foot obviously is gonna come, and this is where you are. Yeah, so I'm leaning on both elbows, Ideally, that's not good in the long run to do that because it can affect your shoulder, your back shoulder. So you need to bring that back hand forward a little bit so that you're on one elbow. Good, and then you just keep looking forwards and lifting your feet up. Lovely. Gorgeous, all right. And if you're in the, uh, back, um, this pose, <laughs> bring one hand down, right hand down, left arm up. Find a nice openness if you like. Feels really nice. If you're working with a side crow, keep working with it. Get a chance to the other side in a minute. Bring that hand down and switch sides. Left hand down, right arm up. Take a breath in. Well done, I just about saw your hand then now. <laughs> and then bring that right hand down. Both hands down. If you're in a crow, Come all the way up, bring your knees together now, even if you're in um, wide leg squat. And then your hands come forwards and you're gonna come all the way up to standing using your core, all the way up, come all the way up, reach the arms up, take a standing back bend, breathe in, and breathe out, hands to your heart. How are you doing? Other side, well done. Inhale, reach the arms up. Let's get back with our breath again. Exhale, fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, the heart lifts forwards, crown of the head lengthens. Exhale, plant your hands and this time right foot back. Come into a high crescent lunge on the right side. Reach the arms up. And then bend that left elbow this time. So the same elbow as your front knee and bring the uh, fingertips behind you in your shoulder blades, right arm out to the side. So that left arm is up and over your head, Mandy. And then, <laughs> Mandy, still in crescent lunge. <laughs> it's all right, I know, my arm was small screen. And you're in this, arms bound behind you. So lift up, inhale. And then exhale, release that. So your left hand now comes to the inside of the left hip crease in crescent lunge. Right arm reaches up. And then lengthen and lengthen and lengthen. Keep bringing that left out hip crease back and reach the right elbow or the right forearm or the right um, upper arm or even up to the armpit. And then press the palms together in this twisted lunge or Lengthen the right hand down, reach the left arm up if you have space in your shoulders. Not all of us do. So sometimes you're getting just as much of a twist by palms being together. <clears throat> breathe in. Stay with that breath and breathe out. I know it's hard to breathe in twist. You're doing amazing. Come all the way back to centre. And then reach the right arm all the way up and back. Pivot on the right foot, find Virabhadrasana 2. Oh, it's nice to be in warrior 2, isn't it? <laughs> Let's take peaceful warrior. Inhale, right hand down, left arm up. Breathe in here. And then exhale, come back to centre. Finding triangle as you inhale, straighten the front knee. Adjust your back foot if you need it. Exhale, reach and reach and reach. Left hand down. Right shoulder opens up, right arm up. Take a full breath here, breathe in. And breathe out. Lovely. 
Next breath in, come back to center. And then as you breathe out, finding that side angle, Padmasana. So either bound or half bound or not bound at all. Binding just helps to open your shoulders, which is what we really sort of need in twists, especially if you're taking these bound twists. And we're going to do a few seated twists after this round. Inhale. And then exhale. Breathe in, come all the way back up to centre, undoing your bind gently if you have it. And then breathe out, right hand comes forwards, pivot on the right foot, find that crescent lunge and hands to your heart. Straighten the front knee, and then step the back foot in about a third of the way, coming into that twisted triangle again. So I'm going to take mine with a block. So keep working that left out hip back, maybe using your hand in the hip crease and your right out hip forwards. And then lengthen forwards with your right hand to really reach forwards as far as you can with both legs straight if you can. And then the right hand comes either down onto the block. Keep long in your body so you're not rounding and folding like pyramid, you're staying long. And then maybe you turn your chest open to the left looking up to the ceiling, hands can be on the sacrum, or that left hand can be up if your shoulder whoops, is allowing it. Gaze up or down, depends on your balance. <laughs> Breathe in. Keep reaching that left out hip back, right out hip forwards. Breathe out. Well done, I know it's tricky on balance. Well done, Lou. Inhale, looking amazing, everybody. You really got it. Breathe out. Good, one more breath in. Beautiful, and then exhale, bring that top hand down, and then step the back foot to meet the front, and bend both knees, come straight into a chair pose. We're gonna do the same thing again. So you can come into your yogi squat if you like, bring your hands to your heart, come up high onto your tiptoes, and bend all the way down to a seat, so sitting on your heels. Then reach your Oh, we didn't come to a prayer first, but we'll come to it now. <laughs> Bring your right tricep towards that left knee this time. I did the wrong way last time. And then coming into side crawl on this side. Or you can stay here, or you can take this yogi squat. And you can work with your hands there, like we did before. If you're coming into Bhakasana, both hands like Chaturanga, so they're about shoulder width apart. If you want to try it with just one arm, because that's really the pose, then just try bringing your left hand, your back hand, forwards a little bit. And then start to lean forwards and look forwards. And all the, the thigh of your left leg is on the upper arm, just above the elbow. Then just lift the feet up. Look forwards and lift up. Keep hugging the belly in and squeezing the inner thighs. And hold it for a few breaths if you can. Maybe you can straighten both legs if you want to do the flying version, if you're working with that. How are you doing, Lou? <laughs> yeah, you're all right. <laughs> doing great. Good. Don't forget, if you're in your um, Malasana, you can bring one hand down, reach the other up. You can take a bind if you like. There's lots of ways to work with it. Good. And if you've had enough in your side crow, how are we doing? I think you've had enough. Come back to centre. Well done, Julie. I can just about see you. <laughs> Heel, toe your feet in. Bring your feet together, come up onto the balls of your feet, hands to your heart, lengthen the spine. And let's use your legs strength, core strength. Can you join us, Lisa? Are your knees okay with this? Come all the way up. Ooh. And then heels down. Reach the arms up, inhale. And take a nice starting back bend. Do some nice back bends to finish off as well. Hands come to your heart. All right, let's make our way to the ground. Breathe in, reach the arms up to the sky. And exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway. And then exhale, either down dog, or you can vinyasa to a down dog if you like. Chaturanga and up dog, down dog. Your choice. Either way, we'll all meet in a down dog. And if you're vinyasa, I like to vinyasa just to really get myself connected again to my breath. That's what my vinyasa is really about for me. Next breath in, look forwards. And make your way to a seat. You can either hop forwards 
and jump through, or you can bring your knees down, sit onto a hip, and reach your legs forwards. Yeah, lovely. Beautiful, Sandra. Everyone, you look great. Maybe turn it, yes, that's it. So I can see you. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come into Marichasana. So bend into the left knee to start with, and your right leg straight out in front. And your um, left sole of the foot is level with your sit bone. Good. Really grow tall through the spine and the crown of the head. Dog's trying to get in. <laughs> and you'll bring your uh, left, right hand behind you just to find length. Then reach your left arm all the way forwards. Turn the palm out. Do your best. This is where you might want your strap. Do your best to reach around and grab a hold of your right hand. If you need a strap, this is where you use your strap because I don't want you really folding forwards too much. I want you to feel more of a twist in this one. And then you're just going to twist and look over your right shoulder. Keep pointing the right toes up as well. Have active feet on your right side. And find this nice twist in Marichasana, round Marichasana. So it's like this. Are you with me, Lisa? Do you get it? So it's your left upper arm around that left knee reaches around behind you to grab hold of the right hand. There. Good breath in. And a breath out. Good. One more breath in. And then as you breathe out, come back to centre, undo the bind. If you've got the strap there, let it go to the side and come to this boat pose. Inhale here. Good, and then exhale, cross the ankles. And you can reach forwards, go through a vinyasa, or step back to downward facing dog. No choice. Vinyasa is nice to do, it's a little bit ashtangery for the ashtangis in our, in our group. <laughs> Lovely. Beautiful, everyone. And then when we're done, we'll make our way to a seat again. Either jump through, or else come down onto your knees. Feet in front, let's do the other side. Bend the right knee so that the heel is quite close to your hip. I'll try and be more, um, uh, I'll explain it better this time. And then your, so it's quite close to this right glute, not too close to the left thigh. And then reach your right arm all the way, as high as you can so that the knee and the armpit are really together. So if it's a new pose to you, I need to explain it really, don't I? Turn the right palm to face the outside, bring that hand behind you. Left arm goes behind, and then try and find length. So really twisting, maybe looking over that left shoulder. Maybe holding on to the, the strap as well. A strap is always good, because you don't have to struggle to hold your hands. You've still got a bind here. You're just lengthening your arms by using the strap. Inhale. Active toes on your left side, and then exhale. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, come back to centre. Release the strap. And this time, bring your feet into Baddha Konasana and your hands behind you. And just send the collarbones up. Take a nice seated back bend. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. This is really nice. This feels so good in my body after those twists. And then exhale, come back to centre. Let's do a couple more seated twists. This time you're going to bend your uh, left leg so that the heel's close to your right glute. Good. And then you're going to reach your left arm towards your right toe. Good. So that your right knee's bent. And then reach your right hand behind you to grow tall and find a bit of length. And then either keep holding on with your peace fingers to your big toe or hold on to the outside edge of that foot if you have more space and straighten that leg. So you're straightening your right leg, lifting up and twisting and looking over the right shoulder. Yeah, well done. I think everyone's got it. Inhale here. And an exhale twist. So it's a nice bit of hamstring length as well as a twist. Inhale. If anyone knows what this is called, you can let me know afterwards. <laughs> and an exhale. Good. Maybe it was made up. I'm using a lot of things that I learned with Jason Crandall, my teacher. So he sometimes makes things up. Come all the way back to centre. 
Let go of that right foot with your left hand and find boat pose. Inhaling your boat. Exhale, cross the ankles. Come forwards, go through a vinyasa if you like. You can try jumping back or you can step back to a down dog. Let's meet in down dog. Know where you are and don't feel that you know you can. There's so many options and some days you just feel you want to do something else. You don't have to always go to the max, that's what I mean. So look forwards and then journey to your seat. Either bringing your knees down or stepping forwards. Yeah, let's do the other side. So bend the right knee and so the right heel, so the left knee is bent as well. The right heel is near the left glute. Then hold on to the left big toe with your peace fingers of your right hand and straighten that leg. If you have more space, hold on to the pinky toe edge. And if you need a strap, use the strap. That's fine too. These are all, all accessible. Grow tall and really try and twist. So just find a nice hamstring with a twist. Inhaling. And that back hand can always come behind you if you want, if you have the space in your shoulders to reach towards your right thigh. One more breath in. Great, everyone. Exhale, come back to center. Let go of that and bring your feet into Baddha Konasana again. Hands behind, lengthen the collarbones up. Breathe in. And then breathe out. Come back to center. One more seated twist. Adha Matsi Andrasana with different arm variations if you like. So bend your left knee and then so that your left heel is near your right bottom. And then bring your right uh, foot on the outside of your left knee. All these rights and left. Adha Matsi Andrasana. Half Lord of the Fishes, this is called. So your right hand's going to come behind you just to find length. Left arm either reaches up and the tricep up towards the armpit is around the outside of that uh, right thigh, or you can wrap that um, left elbow around the front of the knee and interlace your hands. If you have the elbow against the, um, or the tricep against the outer thigh, maybe you can stretch that arm down to reach the knee if you have the space in your shoulders. Maybe you can take a bind if that's in your practice. Really nice deep twist here, inhale. Yeah, take a bind, I know you can do that, Julie. And exhale. Breathe in, find length, and breathe out. Nice, really nice deep twist, but don't go too far that you feel pain. Just feel a nice twist. So soften your belly when you twist. You don't need to hold on to any tension there. With one more breath, inhale. And exhale, come back to centre. Just changing sides, not doing a vinyasa in between. Bring your, bend your right knee, left sole of the foot on the outside of the right leg. And then take the same variation. So if you want to hug that knee, find length. This is a really nice way to find this twist. Or if you're bringing that uh, upper arm to the outside of the thigh, and maybe the hand comes to the knee. Maybe you take a bind. Really grow tall rather than folding forwards. So you're twisting. So if the twist is making you short of breath, just notice and back out a little bit. One more breath. Breathe in. And breathe out. All the way back to centre. Undo the legs, bend your knees, and then lower down onto your back. Oh, it feels good to be on your back. It doesn't mind anyway. Let's come into some back bends to finish off. Some heart openers, really nice way after twist. So we're going to take three back bends. Your choice. You can take three bridges, or you can take one bridge and two wheels. And we're going to do them together and I'll, I'll go through them. And if you need to be at a wall um, for your wheels, that's always nice to have blocks at the wall for your hands. Or you can have blocks under your feet. So we'll start with a bridge. You can even take a supported bridge. Or you can use one of those wheels, if you've got a yoga wheel, to come into your back bend on. Where, whatever you choose, just have something that you can open that space in the front body. So let's come into a bridge to start with. Feet planted, just 
in front of your hips, hip width apart. And then start to press your feet down, lifting the tailbone up, lifting the low back, middle back, upper back. Maybe bring the hands underneath you, or you can bring the hands beside you and press the elbows down, just getting the lift up through the front of the body. Imagine squeezing a block in between your thighs so you've got that adduction, the inner thighs towards each other. Engaging through the glutes, lengthening all the way from the knees, all the way up from the chest to the knees. Take a breath in and take a breath out. Press down into your feet, lift a little bit higher, inhale. And then as you exhale, if your hands are underneath you, just release them, lower down, one vertebrae at a time, all the way onto your mat. And just pause in a neutral spine, maybe feet come as wide as the mat, knees go in together, just for a breath or two in between. It's quite energetic doing back bends. So, you know, listen to your body, but give it a go. Two more back bends, or come to a supported bridge. If you're coming to Urdhva down your asana, I'll do this one with you. Bring your feet hip width apart. I'm putting mine on blocks. That gives me that extra lift. And they're quite close to your glutes. And then your hands come just either side of your ears, and fingers point towards your shoulders, elbows hug in. Good. Take a breath in. And then start to lift the hips up, maybe come up onto the crown of the head. If you're going into bridge, go ahead, supported bridge with a block under your sacrum. And press down and get lift all the way up into your Urdhva Damirasana. Good, and then take about three to five breaths here. Really finding length in the front body, relaxing the neck, looking behind you. Trying to straighten the elbows, uh, I'm still working on that. Good. Two more breaths. And then when you come down, always tuck your chin in if you're in a four wheel. If you're in a bridge, come all the way down. Find that neutral spine. Feet mat width, knees together. Couple of breaths. One more, okay? I know these are hard. <laughs> Do your best. I'm going to take a supported bridge for the last one. So wherever you are, know where you are and be happy that your body wants that. Good, so find a starting position, feet towards the hips. Press the feet down, lift the hips up. Either bridge or urdva or a supported bridge, which is what I'm coming to now. And I'm even going to lengthen my legs, bring my arms above my head. Just opening my front body. Take it if you're in your wheel, you'll look amazing, or your bridge. Wherever you are, taking those breaths. And when you're reversing out of it, you're... <laughs> Good job, Rachel. You're tucking your chin in. Lovely. And when you're ready, making your way down. If you're in a supported bridge, you can stay there a bit longer if you like. Otherwise, coming all the way down onto the mat, finding that neutral spine just for a moment. Knees come together. And then bring your feet hip width apart, bend your knees in, reach through the knees. Finding a happy baby if you like. This is as much of a forward fold as we're going to do, but you can always take more later if you want on your own. If you want to take Apanasana, you can do that too, which is hugging your knees in, maybe rounding the spine, bringing your head up towards your knees. Just sort of listening. What's, what, what do I need? And I find it nice to lengthen the tailbone down so that the whole of my back is trying to be flat on the mat in my happy baby. My hips get a little bit more of a stretch as the knees come down towards the armpits. The heels stretch up towards the ceiling. Good. And then bring your knees in towards your chest. Hug your arms around your knees. Take a big breath in. Hold it at the top. Open your mouth and sigh it out. And let your feet come long. As long as the mat, arms come out by your side. 
palms face up. Make any little adjustments. Give yourself this time in this last asana, this most important of asanas. This pose called Shavasana. <laughs> it's all right. And in this pose, you can really just let your body absorb what you've done. Let your breath settle back. And let your mind just be calm. Be still for a moment. Before the day begins. Please know that you can stay. I'm not going to guide you out. Like I said, I think it's nice to have a long shavasana after twists, or even you might want to do some inversions. Honor your own practice.